We talked about polygons and we talked about congruence, and the next lesson is about transformations, which builds really nicely right off of congruence, because a transformation is something that's going to move your figure, but not change the size or shape. So any image that you create from a pre-image, or the one that you start with, would be congruent to your original if it's a transformation. Um, the three transformations that we're going to talk about today are translations, rotations, and reflections. If you need more time to copy down your target, please pause the video before you continue on. A translation is a slide. It slides the figure along the line without turning it. So each point slides the same distance from its original, and they, say, they stay in the same position. Every point will be the same distance from its original point. This is a translation. A rotation turns the figure around a point called the center of rotation. This point right here would be the center of rotation. Again, notice that the vertices are still the same distance from the center of rotation. All it is is the whole figure turns around. You can rotate counterclockwise or clockwise, um, and there will always be a center of rotation. And the last one, a reflection or a flip, um, flips the figure across the line to create a mirror image. Again, notice how the vertices are equal distance from this line now. Those distances will stay the same. All it's doing is flipping across the line. So we have slides, turns, and flips. Translations, rotations, and reflections are all types of transformations. And transformations, again, retain the size and shape. So the figure will not be changed in that sense. It'll only be moved. The resulting figure or image, we call it the image that results, and what we start with is the pre-image. The resulting figure or the image of a translation, rotation, or reflection is always going to be congruent to the original figure or your figure or your pre-image. So that's, that's something nice to know. Before we get into the lesson, really, I want to just think about, you know, where in the real world do you see these types of transformations? Um, you know, I want you to see the world mathematically. And so if you think about something, I think about amusement parks really for this. But what would be an example of a translation that exists in the world or a rotation that exists or a reflection? Um, I think, you know, if I'm thinking about Sandcastle, a great example of a translation might be a water slide, right? You start at the top, you slide down, you're still the same person, the same size, same shape, you just slid down the slide. Um, an example of a rotation, maybe, uh, you know, we all, growing up as little kids, if you went to Kennywood, you probably liked the merry-go-round, and you're going around at the center of rotation, which happens to be the center of the merry-go-round. You could also say the swings, if you've been to Kennywood, right, that swings around, um, but the center still stays the same. Um, and then the ref a reflection. A reflection would be, you know, where do we see reflections? Well, you see them every day in mirrors or in water if you're looking down into a lake or a puddle or a pond. Um, so we can see these in the real world, too. And I just want to make sure you make that connection um, because it's fun to look at the world mathematically. So we're going to talk about transformations and what they do to an ordered pair. And I really I want you to see and understand why these are the changes that occur and not just write down the rules. So you can even try this without me before you press play. Let's just think about a point. Let's think about a point two, three. I want you to do all of these things to two, three, and I want you to see where it ends up and see if you can come up with a rule for it. Let's say you have a translation, first of all. A translation, up or down, will change the x comma y point. How is it going to change it? Well, take the point two, three. If I say translate it up five units, where would it end up? If I say translate it up five units, it'd be right here. Or if I say translate it down two units, where would it end up? Right here. So think about those ordered pairs. When you do a translation up or down, what stays the same in the ordered pair and what changes? If it's a vertical translation, the x is still going to remain the same x. The y is what's going to change, and we're going to add or we're going to subtract a number depending on what kind of translation it is. Is it up or down, and how many units? Okay, we'll take that two, three point, and let's translate it left or right now. What would you do if we, tr where would your point end up if you translated two, three, left five units? Left five units, which is slide five units to the left. Or if I said translate it three units to the right. 
What about these ordered pairs? What would change? What would stay the same in that sort of translation, and what would change? Well, now you're sliding left or right. You're changing the x value. So the x would be added or subtracted to a number, whatever you're translating by, and then the y would stay the same. If you're translating to the left, that's a negative number because you're heading towards these negative values over here. If you translate to the right, then that's towards the positive numbers. So you'd be adding a number. Okay, what about a rotation, 180 degrees? If we have two, three, and we rotate this in 180 degrees, and I'm going to help you out with this, uh, it's going to rotate around the center, the origin, and the center, the origin is going to be the center of rotation, excuse me. And if you know something about 180 degrees, or we learned something about 180 degrees, it connects with lines, right? So connect your point, and you don't always have to draw this, but this will just help you see why it makes sense. Connect your point to the center of origin and drag it out a little bit farther. When you, excuse me, when you rotate 180 degrees, your point will be on that line somewhere. So what, and, and remember that the distance from the center to your pre-image is going to be the same distance from your center to your image, right? So here, this point 2, 3, if we rotate it, 180 degrees, doesn't matter whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, it's going to end up right here. What is that ordered pair? Well, that's negative 2, negative 3. So what happens when you do a 180 degree rotation? The x and y numbers stay the same, but they both become the opposite of whatever they are. If they're negatives, they're going to become positives. If they're positives, they're going to become negatives. All right, well, let's keep going with this 2, 3 point. And I'm going to clear out some of our work over there just so that we can see this more clearly. So let's get some of these other points out of there. We still have 2, 3. If we reflect it across the x-axis, reflect 2, 3 across the x-axis, where is it going to end up? Here's my x-axis. If I reflect it, it's going to go the same distance down here. What happened to your ordered pair? Here the x stays the same, the y becomes negative. Maybe you can use that then to make a prediction about what would happen if you reflect across the y-axis. The y-axis is the vertical one. We reflect 2, 3 across the y-axis. Where is it going to end up? What would be that ordered pair? What happens to x and y? Now this time the x becomes the opposite and the y stays the same. So moving to 3 hopefully just helps you to see why these rules make sense. Um, and then you're going to use these rules on your own to do some transformations on some polygons. Before we do that though, let's look at example 1. I want to make sure you can identify what type of translation, your transformation excuse me, you are seeing. In example 1, would, it, would A be a translation, rotation, or reflection, or none of these? And notice these little primes on the points. Those are just telling you those are your resulting pictures. So this is what you started with, and this is the image. This is what came after. So the image has the little primes on it to show that it's like new. It's the new A and B and C and D. So what happened? This would be a reflection. You can see that it reflects across the line so that the C's are closer together. It kind of flips over, right? Okay, what about B? What happens here? You have triangle A, B, C. This is your first one. The second one is the image with the little primes on there. They're like little apostrophes above the letters. And what do we do? It looks to me like we just turned it. We just turned B to go over there, A to go up a little bit more, and C to go up a little bit more as well. So this would be a rotation. So let's try to draw some transformations. You could draw a translation, and what you're going to need when you draw a translation is a ruler, or you're going to need a piece of paper that you can kind of mark the same distance. You really want to measure with these. Um, so draw the image of the triangle after translating a long line AB so that A coincides with B, sorry, A prime coincides with B. So you're going to draw a new A, a new B, and a new C. We're going, to, we're going to translate it along this line right here. So this is the line that it's just going to slide right along. It's going to keep sliding so that your A image lands on where B is. 
which means this A is going to slide that way until this point right here also becomes your A prime. Now you just kind of finish it off. What I would do is I would extend the line that you're translating on. So they said we're translating along AB. I'm going to just extend that out. Then you can approximate if you want to, but I would try to measure how long, um, how long it is to make it so that A prime would end up on B. So for mine, I can see that it's a little bit over an inch, about an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to draw an inch and a quarter from my new A, my A prime, to make that where my B would be. So about an inch and a quarter, here's three-fourths, here's an inch, here's a quarter. It's going to be right about there. All right. There we go. Then you can draw in that line. This is going to be actually part of your new triangle. So here's one side of it. All the other lines are going to be parallel to their originals and also the same length. So you can kind of approximate how long is AC. You're going to draw a line parallel to AC from your A prime. So I'm going to just approximate this. My AC is right here. I'm going to draw another one from my A prime, trying to make it as parallel as I can get it. And then my B, my C to B is right here. I'm going to draw a line keep keeping it parallel from my new C to my new B. The last step is to label your vertices. So we have A prime, B would have slid over here to make this corner B prime, and C prime, or the image of A, the image of B, and the image of C. The last three then, we're going to practice taking coordinates and doing transformations to them. Remember the rules, and I want you to try these three. Remember the rules you did with the order pairs. A translation down five units is going to affect which value. Remember we said this would be x comma y would become, if we're going down five units, x does not change, y would go minus five. So your new points, and I'm going to label these just so that I can talk about them, a, b, c, and d. Your new points should be written down and then you should also graph it. The new points would be negative one doesn't change and it would be y minus five, so six minus five is one. B prime would be negative three, that doesn't change. Four minus five would be negative one. The three will not change. Minus five would be one. And the five will not change. Minus five will be negative one. Now all we have to do is graph our new image. Negative one, one. Negative three, negative one. 3, 1, and 5, negative 1. So here's our new, tra uh, new trapezoid. All it did was translate down 5 units. Try the next two, then, pre then pause it, then press play to check over it. Okay, so hopefully you've tried B and C. The change that happens when you do a rotation is um, x comma y becomes negative x, negative y. So you're changing both the signs of the x's and the y's. Hopefully for this one, you got these new order pairs and this new graph. Please make sure you write down these order pairs. This is your work, guys, and this is also your work. So I recommend writing this down. You must write the, the pairs down and you must draw the graph if it says to graph. And the last one, the, the change when a reflection happens over the x-axis, the x stays the same if I'm reflecting down, but the y becomes the opposite. So these are your new points. Make sure you have them written. And this is your new graph. Perfect.